All right, we are back, High School Star League fans, with game number two of Walnut High School taking on Miracosa. Teams have swapped side. Walnut will be on blue side for this match, and Miracosa on the red side. I am Wins22, joined again by By Night. By Night, you there, man? Yes, and it is a pleasure to cast with you, good sir. So the first game, very one-sided in favor of one, Walnut High School. Miracosa now wants revenge, and they actually ban out Janna first ban. Uh, I think that's pretty big. Uh, I think that's a that's a good ban. Janna definitely did a very good job in the last in that last game. Very monumental in one high school's win. And supports aren't really champions that do a ton of damage, so they're oftentimes kind of left behind, left out of the spotlight. But uh, it's nice to see Miracosta giving respect to that Janna, actually banning out the Graves as well. Yeah, we can see again those uh, the jungle bands again coming out from Walnut. Um, you know, we saw the Vi band last time. This time, thrown in the Sejuani, just trying to really focus. I am sexy pants um, and the Nidalee, just saying. You know, if we don't want to first pick a jung jungler, we don't want to give one of these top tier junglers over to Miracosa because you know, as you and I both said, it's really up to I am sexy pants to try to help these lanes. Uh, win early um, because we saw that game just snowball way out of control too too early for their you know team fight oriented composition to really come to fruition well the cool thing about walnut high school strategy right now in the batting phase is if they ban out three junglers they have first pick so they can first pick another jungler and then uh, miracosa doesn't really have anything to pick although uh, it looks like they don't actually uh, pick a jungler here so Miracosta has a choice between possibly a Jarvan, a Rek'Sai. Interesting. Actually hovering over the Zac. I have not seen a Zac in a really long time. Yeah, no, not competitively at least. Um, but, you know, as we said, those, those tank junglers are creeping back into the meta. But this is not the... I mean, Zac has a pretty decent um, early gank potential with... You know, that elastic shot and the passive able to not only engage in an early gank, but prolong it um, as he'll turn into blobs should he go down. Um, but the insta-lock Diana, I mean, you mentioned they're opting to not go with a jungler. And, I mean, they didn't even hesitate with Diana. You can really get a sense just watching the, the pick band faders unfold that Walnut High School knows what they're doing. I mean, again, and look at this. They don't even have – they have all the scenarios mapped out ahead of them. Instalock Fizz, not a second goes by, um, and they're just keeping – I mean, I, I really even think teams can have presence in pick band just with, you know, little iterations like that. I mean, they're – on the last round, Miracosa took the full 50 seconds for their decisions. When you're that confident that you can just take, you know, five seconds to lock in your second rotation, I mean, it, it you're constantly thinking. There's no time to take a breath in this pick ban phase. Um, and we'll see what uh, where that Zack goes. I'm assuming it is the jungle Zack. Um, but this Fizz... Uh, um, I'm thinking it might even be a jungle fist. Jungle fist is incredibly strong right now, and as you know, we mentioned a lot of the tier one junglers have been banned out. So that would be a really, really great pickup um, for Walnut, having two assassins really on their team in that Diana and Fizz, both with you know some innate tankiness already in them. Uh, a lot of people opting to build tank Fizz now. Walnut well, High School has a lot of dive potential with the Diana and Fizz locked in. If you are the Caitlyn right now in this game, you have to be very scared. And positioning is going to be of utmost importance. Because if you get too close to a Fizz or to the Diana, you're just going to instantly get bursted. Uh, and with the Irela coming out as well, that is so, so scary for Caitlyn right now. Yeah. Thresh Prince on Thresh is going to have to do a very good job peeling right now for Caitlyn because there are three threats that just want to kill Caitlyn above all else. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, I'm a little bit sad to say that is going to be a Mordekaiser locked in with the last pick for Miracosta. 
Um, so we'll have to see how this one plays out. But, you know, not really the early lane dominance that we were hoping for from them in terms of the champions. Caitlyn is one of those AD carries that does have a lot of early game lane dominance. But overall, yeah. Uh, Zach doesn't have a lot of damage for his early ganks. He does have a strong knockup, and I believe his slow or his knockup actually did get buffed as well. So it is going to knock up champions for longer. Mordekaiser also does not have the worst of laning phases. It's just going to be really interesting to see how this one works out. Diana, one of those champions that does have a little bit of a slower start. So possibly Mordekaiser will be able to punish Diana early. But overall, yeah, I mean, I feel like the team compositions are going to once again be very reliant on who is able to win the laning phase. Because if Costa, Mira Costa, is able to win the laning phase this game, they're just going to have such a tanky front line that they're going to be able to win this game relatively easily. I mean, their team fight's just going to just going to do wonders for them. But on the other side, Walnut High School, so much burst potential, so much pick potential with the Fizz, with the Diana, with the Irelia. They just have the ability to jump on a champion and instantly kill it. And if they do kill the Caitlyn at the beginning of the fight, they just have no damage sources on the side of Miracosta. Kaelin and Mord are like their only damage. Yeah, they are the only damage. And we did see a little bit of trickery right there at the last second. Um, but it is going to be Alfurious rocking that Fizz in the jungle. And, you know, as you mentioned, there's just so much damage coming out from this Walnut High School team. Um, I'm not really sure. I don't want to call it before the game starts. But I've got to give at least the pick ban phase over to Walnut. Um, we'll have to see how this one plays out. Yep. Alrighty, guys. Definitely don't go anywhere because we are going to be in game in a matter of minutes. But we are going to take a short break here as we wait for the spectator delay timer to run out. In the meantime, though, a quick shout out to our sponsors, Tespa, Lucrate, Newegg, MSI, Rocket, Jinx, and Twitch.tv. Without them, High School Star League would not be possible. Uh, my name is Bionite. I'm here with Wince22. We will see you guys in game.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is game two of Walnut High School taking on Miracosa High School. I am Wins22. Joined again by By Night. By Night, how you doing, man? I am doing very good. This is the last match of the night, but just makes it that much more exciting. Hopefully, we'll have some awesome League of Legends action coming out, and I think we most definitely will. Uh, as some really explosive explosive team compositions coming out from both sides and the anticlimactic pause comes out <laughs> just as the teams walk out of base. Yeah, so we do have a pause in the match. Lucian is lagging, I suppose, is, is what is being said right now in the chat. Zach says reported. Uh-oh, things are getting real. <laughs> things are heating up in this match. Um, but it looks like play is going to resume here in just a second. Uh, it's fine. Give me time to rearrange the icons on the scoreboard. Um, and yeah, so our champions are heading out onto the rift. Uh, again, this is Miracosa High School on the red side going against Walnut on blue. And, uh, you know, so far today, we haven't really seen any early game invades. You know, teams sort of threaten... Um, and we'll see if anything comes of this. Miracosa grouping up right now in the bush and river. And only Morgana is going to catch them out. They do see... Oh my gosh, she gets blocked! What was that? She got blocked by the wall or something. First blood going over to Mordekaiser. Yeah, she stopped walking for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why. But Mordekaiser with the first blood is really, really big for them. They didn't have to blow a single summoner for that kill either. Whereas um, they are able to pick up a kill with nothing. I was going to say, whereas Morgana did blow something, but Morgana didn't flash or exhaust or anything. I'm not even sure Morgana threw out a queue there. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what she was doing, sleeping on the job there. Uh, but that does allow Mordekaiser to buy an item if he wants, but he just sits in the mid lane for some reason. He could literally come to lane with an extra ampli amplifying tome. Uh, but he opts not to. Uh, and a very interesting decision there. The the 400 first blood gold that early into the game should have meant that he came to lane with something more, but I guess he, do he doesn't want to spend his money. He likes saving money, I guess. Yeah, and not only was that first blood going over to his that demo, Mordekaiser, but every single member on Miracosa got an assist for that. So everybody is off to a good start. Um, in terms of this lane, you know, we said it's really important that they get a good early game and they really could not have asked for much more um, after that sort of unfortunate series of events for Walnut High School. Yep. So in the mid lane, we do see Mordekaiser already out of pots as he has been absolutely harassed down. Uh, a ton by this Diana in the middle lane, so that is not looking good for him. If he had backed, he could have come to lane with like five pots or something, but because he did not back, he's gonna just get boil bullied out here, and this is not what we want to see coming out from Miracosa. They have to win this laning phase in order to win this game, and they're getting bullied out in all accounts again. Yeah, and the Thresh Prince landing that death sentence, Lucian saying, you know, I really don't care, I'm gonna go ahead and dash forward once it falls off me. Um, so trade one in the bot lane. Uh, Captain Spyro hitting level two there. Meganar on the way though. Um, he's gonna have to handle that aggression carefully. We do have another pause in the action. Um, something, something Ethernet. <laughs> I don't know. We will see what exactly the issue is. Um, but yeah, so. Thus far in laning phase, I mean, we're only three minutes into the match. We did have that first blood going over to Mordekaiser, but it really hasn't transitioned yet into anything meaningful. Um, all the lanes being bullied out, I mean, you mentioned, is that them had time to back and get some pots for a little bit of sustain and probably wouldn't be bullied out as hard by Hikari, um, who locked in that Diana so fast, you can't help but think that he is really, really comfortable on that champion. So it looks like they're talking about a possible remake. I don't think they actually are going to remake this one. Morgana claiming that she actually got stuck in the wall there. 
and couldn't move. But I don't believe there are any, any. I don't believe there is anything in the rule book about getting stuck in a wall being <laughs> warranted yeah. for a remake. So they are gonna have to play this one out. Uh, Mordecai's are falling very low. Is actually gonna die uh, for second blood there. And I honestly think all of that could have been avoided if Mordecai's had just been <laughs> willing to go back home, spend some money. Oh wow! Really good guess and in land, followed by a. Solid build up for Peacemaker. The Thresh Prince flashing forward, but then stands still for a second. Just childish. On the run. Oh my gosh, the 90 caliber net is going to miss after summoning Romney flashes forward. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Alphirius says, I'm going to gank top. Flashes forward with the Urchin Strike. That's going to be a kill picked up in top. Morgana had a phenomenal exhaust there on summoner Romney. Seminar Romney went in with the the critical auto attack proc, uh, but the exhaust causes it not to do enough damage to actually kill the Lucian, and everyone's so low in the spot lane right now. Yeah, and, and nobody really knows what to do. I mean, Death Sentence and Dark Binding both being hit at the exact same time. Uh, great, great Death Sentence by the Thresh Prince, but, you know, Summoner Romney totally locked down um, with... The hardest CC in the game, arguably, cannot help uh, make that trade turn in their favor. Meanwhile, DJ Joy is too young. Um, sort of threatening to back, not really sure. Um, but yeah, you know, going back to that that level one, I mean, I, I even I said it when I saw it. I, it definitely looked like she got stuck in the wall. Um, probably could have flashed and gotten out alive anyway. Um, but yeah, some funny business went on there. I don't know if maybe there's some Velcro on the side of that bush and just held her up a little bit. Um, but a little bit unfortunate, but as you said, nothing in the rule book about getting stuck on a bush, really just sort of unfortunate. Although they do seem to be rebounding totally fine. Walnut High School with a two to one lead right now. I am Sexy Pants though, threatening for a gank from Trite. He is able to get over that wall with the elastic shot. Um, and I don't think that first blood is going to mean too much as Every single lane seems to be doing just fine. Well, the thing is, first blood doesn't mean anything if you don't buy items with it. Because it's just the gold, but the gold in your pocket doesn't help you win duels. Oh, man. And the ignite went down, keeping Hikari out a little bit. She was sick, so she was able to Lunar Rush in there. Sexy Pinch does get the return kill. That's going to pop the passive. Pop the passive. Pop the passive of Zack. And Hikari is going to pick herself up. A double kill. Tap the positive. That's one of my favorite things I've ever said. <laughs> Alright, so the 3 0 Diana in the mid lane is going to be such a big problem. Diana is one of those champions that can snowball so, so hard. Gank your bush dying in the top lane as well. We're seeing a repeat of what happened last game now. Just every single lane falling in favor of Walnut High School once again. Yeah, and again, there's really nothing I am sexy things can do about it, uh, unfortunately. Does have a little bit more early game pressure with that sack, but, you know, not not the really aggressive early game jungler that I was hoping for. Um, I'm assuming that Lee Sin is just not in his champ pool. Uh, he's been conspicuously absent from the big band. And yeah, I don't know. I just don't think that this is the jungler that the, you need when, you know, history repeating itself. We all, every single lane, as you said, just getting off to a massively good start despite that really unfortunate level one. Yeah, and I mean, everything turning around now. Uh, almost a 2k gold lead in favor of Walnut High School. And I mean, they're just a really hard shell to crack. They are a hard shell to crack. They're trying to crack it right now, though, as I am Sexy Pants enters the lane with that elastic shot, throwing down the smite. Troy Too Young is going to go down as I am Sexy Pants flashes for that kill, and a death sentence lands onto it. But oh my gosh, the piercing light is going to pick up two. Can it be free? Oh my gosh, Auto Cam, please. What is this? I think the aggression is stopped in the bot lane. But terrific, terrific play there from this childish, who has been a pretty impressive story in this series. Great Gnar ultimate into the tower. Aggression going on all over the place as the Ignite is not going to be enough to take down Is That Them. 
Hikari right now forcing Mordekaiser out of lane yet again is going to be able to get a lot of work done on this turret. Summoner Romney has to be very, very careful. Uh, just Childish is a level up of people and items. Um, but he does not want to feed another kill to this solution. Every single lane is like, again, winning for Walnut High School. And the thing is, it's not only a kill lead, it's also a CS lead. And actually, Lucian falling very low there does end up dying. Actually, heal baited uh, very nicely by that Caitlyn. Yeah, baited well. A little, I, I mean, very, very disappointing that that kill goes over to the Thresh Prince because it, they really, really are in desperate need to get this Caitlyn. Um, fed in order to just at least draw even in this lane. Um, you know, in terms of scaling, what, what would you say? I mean, I, I would say Caitlyn and Lucian scale in different ways, but, you know, somewhat with equal impact in terms of late game team fights. Well, the thing about Caitlyn, Caitlyn is going to be a lot stronger when you get to the, like, the 5-6 item Kate. But in the middle game, Lucian outshines Caitlyn in so many different ways. Lucian is just going to be way stronger than Caitlyn for about the next 20 minutes. And I think that's honestly all that Walnut needs in order to close this game out as Zack dying once again, Fizz now 2-1-2. Two, and, two. and the thing is, man, it really sucks that Miracosa isn't able to crack this walnut shell because if you can crack a walnut shell, like wal walnuts are delicious nuts. <laughs> oh my god! I, I hope I hope that that's where you were going with with the cracking of the shell. This is sounds very well done. Uh, uh, <laughs> but it's gonna be dragon number one picked up for walnut, and yeah, I mean as you said, Lucian going to have uh, the much more impactful mid game than Kalen and you know the fact that he's coming back to lane with that BF sword and Kalen going back and getting boots which I think is an interesting pickup considering you're already um oh. sort of trying to poke from range the boots are not gonna really do anything for you I mean I would just sit on that 325 and try to get into that BF a little bit sooner that end is gonna land Sumner Romney Trying to get as much poke out as possible. Does get Just Childish a little bit low, but he's got pots. Um, we did see a little bit of action in the top lane. Another kill going over. Did that kill go onto Fizz or onto Aurelia? I didn't, I didn't see. Uh, it was actually a Diana that ganked top. And Diana actually pulled the Gnar out of his hop. Mid hop. And it was like, nope. And, and pulled Gnar right into her for that kill. Although Diana does fall right there. Uh, but talking about the boot pickup, one thing it does allow Caitlyn to do is it makes it much easier for her to try and dodge those bindings coming out from, from Morgana. Uh, but a lot of pressure coming out in this mid lane now that Diana is on the side of Miracosa. Yeah. Uh, and dead Diana doing work. Is that them? Flashes forward, picks up to that kill. And Alfarius there getting a little bit headstrong. I mean, he, he urchin strikes into the middle of three people saying, hey, I'm fed, I've got this. And then the damage comes out, and he's like, oh, I need to get out of here. But it was too little, too late. He is going to fall. And a lot of damage coming down onto that mid tower. As you know, as well as Walnut has done in this early game, it's not quite the snowball. Uh, actually, no, not even not quite. But not at all the snowball that we saw last game. Um, it is, you know, about 2K in 12 minutes. I, th I believe last time we were sitting around 6K in favor of Walnut this early in the game. Um, and I think if I'm Miracosta, I want to group. Um, that mid lane tower is really huge. And if they can start focusing objectives and really playing the map well, it could be a way to somewhat suffocate this Lucian mid game, keep him on the back foot. So as you said, Caitlyn is able to scale up and have a lot of late game pressure. There is I Am Sexy Pants. Doesn't hit anybody with the knockup, but gets the slow followed by a death sentence. On to Troy, and they are going to go down. That is a kill being picked up for Summoner Romney. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, I ganked your bush falls to Alfurious, who is now 3-2-2 two, and two on this kill. And Hikari comes back to, uh, to lane. Both mid laners with a blue buff. Which one will survive? Is that them, though, doing a ton of damage? Not really sure where that came from. But there is Alfarius to pick up the kill with the urgent strike. I am sexy pants. Way too deep. Flashing to the lantern of the tower shot, but the heal saves him. I don't know 
what that <laughs> was, but it was oh, impressive man. in the end. Yeah, that required a lot of summoner spells, but Zack <laughs> does get out alive. I feel like it would have been a little bit easier for him if he had decided to just kind of walk up uh, out through the through the jungle there, but he decides he wants to take the dangerous dangerous path, the dangerous life through the tower. Uh, but he does live on the other side, and man, this has turned into a game. Now eleven to seven in kills. Yes, there is a massive farm advantage on the side of Walnut High School. 123 to 91 in the mid lane, 113 to 75 in the bottom lane, and even in the top lane, 105 to 78. Despite that massive farm lead, Miracosta has been doing a good job responding with kills of their own. And I have to give props to I Am Sexy Pants. He's been doing a lot better job ganking this game, although he has still died a few too many times. Has got down. Three times so far, and I mean, he's doing, I think, better this game than he did last game, but I still think that Alphirius, while maybe a little bit headstrong in certain situations, has had a greater impact so far. And right now we can see I Am Sexy Pants trying to just get a little bit of knowledge about the Dragon Area, but he's going to be caught by the Dark Binding, followed by the Urge Strike. Ooh. Ooh. This is the first time we've really seen... Oh my gosh. Akari takes his at them so low. I was going to say, this is the first time you've really seen um, Walnut sort of respect Miracosa. Rather than just all inning them, you know, as soon as they saw uh, with those z boards some help coming to I Am Sexy Pants, they just very maturely back off that. And with Dragon spawning in a minute, they have plenty of wards down. And they should be able to secure some positioning for this fight. The Thresh Prince, though. Eating a Dark Binding and in the mid lane, Hikari wasting a Lunar Rush onto a minion is gonna go down to them. And the teleport being blown from a gank to a rush, so that is going to be Gnar in position uh, with his team for this dragon spawning in 30 seconds. And Alphirius and Captain Spiral are very tied out. The Thresh Prince goes down in a heartbeat though. Shove the waters being used on Summoner Romney. He goes down, AD Carry is dead. Just Childish is doing a ton of damage on the side though. Very unfortunate turn of events. The hop is gonna miss. GG choice. You're young gonna pick up that kill. And that is really too bad. That it looked, looked like, like it was gonna be so good. Yeah, yeah. It, it looked like Miracosta had finally found the fight that they wanted, but just way too much damage coming out from a Furious there. Fizz able to instantly nuke out the Caitlyn. And like that's what I was talking about in Champion Select. Walnut just has so many threats that can instantly burst your Caitlyn, and it makes it so hard. Yeah, and you see, is that them coming back in, giving double buffs over to just Childish. I don't know if he is too low, the Lantern goes down, I Am Sexy Pants gonna take it, and it looks like they may have prevented this dragon. Um, no, Captain Spyro is in the mix now, he's gonna take up that aggro. The Thresh Prince, though, throwing out the Death Side, and Summoner Omni back from the, the gray screen. Going down the ace in the hole, and he's gonna take just Childish so, so low. I have Sexy Pants goes in with the elastic quick shot. He is going to fall past him, having just been popped. Transcendent Blades being thrown out, double kill being picked up for Alphirius. And yeah, so the snowball took a little bit longer this time, but it's making its way downhill right now. Yeah, the game has finally turned on its head here, and the walnuts are just starting to absolutely roll over Miracosa in every single man. They're able to pick up the second dragon of the game, and anytime Caitlyn tries to get in range of anyone, she is just get, getting instantly nuked. The first time she got instantly nuked by Fizz, the second time she got instantly taken out by Diana. But man, it just sucks to be summon a Romney right now because you just can't make any plays. And yes, you do have the longest range out of any AD carry, except for Jinx when she has her rockets out max level, but even with that long range, just way too many gap closers coming out on the side of Walnut High School that they're able to get under anyway. Yeah, and then you said it in champs, so like the Thresh Prince really is going to have to work it out for him. And that prediction definitely coming true, as there's so few ways for them to deal with the amount of aggression they're able to put down on the table. Uh, meanwhile, in the top lane, Captain Spyro running away from two members of Miracosa. I am Sexy Pants. Oh my gosh, the prediction on that Dark Binding was almost spot on. GG Choice, too young. 
has had two really tremendous support games. Um, and yeah, so it looks like now the rotations, I mean, from Walnut are just... Do you remember last game? I felt like they sent four people to try to gank Balin and with nothing able to come of it in that very crucial mid game where you could maybe turn it around. And right now, it looks like Miracosa just doesn't really know how to respond. Yeah, when you're this far behind in every lane, it just makes it hard because even when you make good plays, sometimes you can still come out behind just because you don't have the gold and you don't have the items to back up the fights that you try that you try and find for yourself. So at this point in the game, like you're already ten thousand gold behind. It's not even twenty minutes in. You need to find three v fours. You need to find three v twos, and those are the only way that you, that you're going to be able to win these fights. And they do find a three v two here, but they still might even lose it. Yeah, they are being took, taken very low. The heal is going to be used, but the pilt over peacemaker are going to get that kill to summon a Romney. And I gank your brush, bush, there, just to. You know, fend off Alfurius who is threatening to come in, but again in the top lane, this is just what happened last game, that mid mid lane where they commit so many resources and this time, yes, it did work out, but meanwhile in the top lane, that is Hikari and Captain Spyro doing work on the second tier top tower. So that is going to be four towers to the one of Miracosa, and it's not a trade that I'm happy with if, I, if I'm Miracosa. Yeah, I mean, that you did get two kills, though, and honestly, if you're Miracosa, you're just happy that something worked for you. Yes, you did lose a, a second-tier top tower for it, which isn't ideal, but at least you made a move, and it worked out for you, and it, it kind of is a confidence booster. Yes, we can still win this game if we do find picks like that. And the Death Sun is going to land on Captain Spyro. The team is on the way, though. Black Shield going to protect him from a lot of damage. He throws out the Transcendent Blades as he kites away. And it looks like both teams are going to back off of this one. But I think your Bush is hit by a Dark Binding and he has to flash away. It's taken down by Hikari who joins the back line. Is that them going to flash for it? Take down Captain Spyro. The ult is used. Children of the Brave going to bring over an Aurelia. To the side of Miracosa, but Alphirius is going to pick up a double kill again. Nobody's able to peel for this Kaelin. There's just way too much dive potential. Mordecai's is the only one still alive as he sort of separated himself from the fight. And he is going to quickly, possibly, fall. Oh, there's a Lunar Rush. One final auto is going to give the ace over to Hikari. And yeah. Seems like a similar story to last time. Took a little bit longer, but the snowball starting to really, really, really gain speed now as Walnut High School are just marching to victory, it seems. Yeah, Walnut has done a phenomenal job this set. Winning game one very handily. And even though they didn't win the laning phase as hard in game number two, they have proven that their mid game is just that much stronger, able to procure and keep and continue to grow this now 12,000 gold lead in favor of them. Still enjoy the blue buff now, just not giving anything to Miracosa. Oh man. Just Childish though gets hit with a death sentence. He's going to dash away. Ace in the hole is going to be blocked by Troy. Lucian going to fall anyway. As War Morgana as the final death sentence. Gives them just that. Meanwhile, on the back, Alphirius throws out from the waters, trying to go on to Summoner Romney. But with a blue buff, and that Zack Passive is up, so he is not going to fall. The Thresh Prince is going to land that one. Hikari decides better and decides to back away, although trapped in the Dragon Pit, just going to go ahead and flash out. But with Dragon spawning right now, that is going to be the first one picked up. So, again, meanwhile, top lane, Captain Spyro just pushing that wave and he's going to back off but so that was a, an extended 4v5 um that really only resulted in a dragon you know as you said uh if you're miracosa right now you've got to take that as a victory but the the road to recovery is still a long and hard one yeah and i mean just as i said that 
Bulnut wasn't giving anything away to Miracosa. They give away three kills and a dragon. That is the caster curse right there. And honestly, I think that was really, really good for Miracosa. They take that 12k gold lead, turn it into only a 9k gold lead now. And just, uh, yes, it only like switches the the lead slightly lower but if they're able to make a few more plays like that like they could even up this game one two more big gold gains like that last one yeah they will definitely need a string of good fights and they're on they're in a position where they can't make too many mistakes mistakes like that chum the water's missing that's the second good ultimate to miss and frankly in that team fight that we just witnessed before the chum the water's missing caitlin was huge as soon as that missed, they were able to turn around and go in on the rest of Walnut. Um, so a few ultimates now on cooldown, but Thresh has fallen. I do not know if Walnut are strong enough to die this tier 2 turret. I am Sexy Pants coming over the wall, forces a flash out of joy. Meanwhile, is that them taking a lot of damage? Just now, again, doing so much work on the outside. That kill is going to go down to Alphirius. Fizz getting himself very, very sad. Makari 20 hit does that, followed by the Luna Rush. And they're continuing to see this turret with great success after taking down I Am Sexy Pants. And as Magadar starts to fall off, that's going to be... Oh my god, Shikari is just going so ham. Goes right in the middle of him. Pops the Zodius with the help of a Colin. They're able to take down another one, but a, a slow but steady siege here. Coming from Walnut, still no damage done to the turret, but they're able to pick up three kills total, I believe, or maybe it was two. It was two kills total, and, you know, nothing being taken in return from Miracosa. Yeah, I have to give props to Morgana there. She landed some very good bindings, all resulting, or two of which resulted in kills there. Sadly, for Walnut High School, it is a little bit harder for them to close this one out because they don't have that poke composition that they had last time, so it makes sieging a little bit harder. But they're getting far enough ahead now that they might just be able to dive. And it looks like just Childish is going to be able to escape. Yeah, they're not going to chase him too far. I think your push is going to get the mid turret. So, evening up, or not evening up, but uh, closing the gap in terms of the structures on the scoreboard, we do see Walnut with four turrets to the two of Miracosa. It is a 26 to 15 kill lead, which is added up to be over 10K in gold, two to one in dragons. Um, yeah, I mean, like you said, they do not have that crazy at range pokey comp that they had last game. Um, and we'll see if they have enough dive to close this out. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I called I called Baron probably three or four times last game, but I do think it would probably aid them a little bit more in this scenario. Um, and so right now, Alphiri is just doing a little bit of exploring in that north jungle. The thing is, even though there's so many kills on the board already, the game is only 26 minutes in, and Baron packs a very big punch. So Baron is a possible way to throw the game here, because if you take a ton of damage to Baron and then get collapsed on by the entire team of Miracosa, you could actually lose a team fight. Your magic resist would be reduced a ton, and Mordecai would pretty much be doing true damage as well as Zack. But on the flip side, it could also be the way for them to close up this game, like you said. If they're able to bait a team fight around Baron without actually starting it, they could easily win a fight against Miracosa. Or if they're able to grab Baron without Miracosa responding, it will then give them the pressure and power they need to actually siege down towers. See, so yeah, I do believe the next play should probably either be around this dragon that's spawning in a minute 20 seconds, or off of a Baron or some type of pick, because they have proven that they are unable to just grab a tower by sieging it if Miracosa is all there defending it. Miracosa just has enough wave clear with that Caitlyn, with that Mordekaiser, but they're able to keep towers alive. Yeah, and we see right now, Walnut is pretty spread out all over the map, leaving Aurelia in that top lane to continue to keep it pushed, making sure that is always a threat. She does have teleport available. We do see two members, or three members right now, 
of Miracosa heading up there, but she they've got that side well warded. And, you know, again, Vision handedly uh, in favor of uh, Walnut as the Thresh Prince is backing in a very, very questionable spot. Throws down the box. It's going to slow them possibly for a re-engage. Jakari Brown very low. Going to pop some Zonia's Captain Spyro, though. Going to do a lot of damage and let Diana pick up that double kill. Nar getting shutdown gold onto her. And the Chum the Waters lands. He flashes forward, bringing it away from the rest of the team. But again, the dive onto the Scalin is so strong. And the rest of Walnut has joined the fight. Shutdown gold going over to Aurelia. That has so far been a four for one trade. And that was definitely a fight in favor of walnut those are the chaotic fights that walnut high school just absolutely excels at with their pick based champions and a ton of damage coming out from solo champions those are the exact types of fights that that walnut high school wants to find yeah and once they win those fights as we can see they're able to just take those objectives Taking down the top inhibitor turn now, and with that opening, I am sexy pants though. Goes in and casts the flash away. Oh man, Alfieri is canceling the, the ace in the hole with the playful trickster. Flash is being burned left and right on the side of Miracosa as they try to chase this team away and out of their jungle. The third dragon for Red team's Walnut has spawned. <laughs> Morgana grabbing that second tier mid tower. Just yeah, and I mean we have a pause in the action, but yeah, you know, as you said, that was a fight. That was the exact fight that they wanted. Um, enough time was wasted by Hakari and damage dealt. Although Diana did fall, uh, just able to buy enough team for the rest of Walnut to show up and deal out a ton of damage, and then with that advantage, they were able to take the top inhibitor turret and with that opening now the game is really going to open up for walnut because as soon as i they'll, they should encounter little to no resistance in taking that down and then as soon as they do we saw the very um mature and and, and solid rotations coming out from them in the last game where they basically said we're going to get that in him and then we're going to take the next turret and then the next turret and then the next one until literally no structures remained on the map um, you know, rather than just taking mid and barreling down mid and trying to win the game as fast as possible, they close it out in very, very methodical fashion. Yeah, and I mean, this is going to allow them to grab their third dragon, go top, grab that inhibitor, and then it makes it really, really easy for them to push bottom. The second tier uh, outer tower, the second tier tower in bot lane is still up, and after Walnut is able to grab that top tier. Uh, that top tower, I mean the top inhibitor uh, in that top lane, they'll have enough pressure from top that it'll just make it super easy for them to push the second tier mid tower, or second tier bot tower and uh, inhibitor tower in that bot lane. Yeah, so I'm not really sure what the issue is in this instance. I think we have I, been having a little bit of lag problems. I think they said it was something about the headset of Zach, his headset died or something like that, and he's not able to communicate with his team. Hmm. So they're, they're pausing it for that reason, although honestly, I don't know if having a headset is really gonna help you win this one. Yeah, headset might not be the answer back into this match. Um, but yeah, so an overall really good series, as you said, played by Walnut here. Currently it is 30, 31 to 16 in kills and a 15k goalie i mean they're they're really it's impressive how they're able to sort of wait for the fight that they want um you know they definitely work as a team and, and move around the map uh very well and just waiting on this pause right now but yeah i mean three points going over to walnut in all likelihood they've got to feel good about this i mean they most definitely do it's definitely uh, good for them as far as their chances making it into the finals here at the end of the semester which is approaching really fast and it looks like they finally fixed the headset issue and the pause should be ending any second here now and play has resumed nar is gucci ready to go dragon looking like it's going to be started yes it is alfarius 
trying to take the third one of these, and we can see Aurelia heading bot. Um, probably going to just sort of start that split push. Wouldn't be surprised to see the rest of Walnut head into the top lane, try to close this one out. And, yeah, that uh, is the smart play. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to back by a few more items. Um, but yeah. I mean, really, really solid series coming out from Walmart. Then, I mean, they kind of won in ever regard both games, won their lanes, solid performances coming out from individual players as well as team rotations as well. But, I mean, this game isn't over yet. So we, we can't we can't talk like like it isn't because I mean it is possible still for Walnut to throw this. I mean, all it takes is a few bad plays in a row, a few catches for Miracosa, they'll be right back in it. I don't think Walnut will make those mistakes, but there is always that possibility. Yeah, and they are starting the split push. Turt is gonna go down very quickly in that bot lane. Hakari going to Engage on Zack with a Lunar Rush. Choice to Young has been on point with these Black Shields. As well as the Bindings. I mean, yeah, that one hitting on Nar. There's another one. Um, and Fizz going into the top lane to move that wave up. That tower is down, so they definitely want to have the ability to rotate up there and quickly take that inhibitor. Uh, it's still not been taken. I believe that tower went down in front of 30 minutes, so... Walnut really taking their time, just being very methodical about this. They do have... Uh, I mean, they're at 62,000 gold, so they are in the late their late-game builds already, and with 45 on the side of Miracosa... I mean, right now we're looking at a 2.5-item Caitlyn versus a 3.5-item Lucian. I mean, the CS differentials as well as the kills. Alfurius, though, has been missing a few chum, chum, chum the waters um, in these team fights. And, we, and we've and seen the ability of Miracosa to win a team fight, um, even if it isn't a tactical misplay by Walnut. Sort of in the middle of a team fight, you know, Miracosa definitely knows when they have a small, small window. Strike back. Um, and another blue buff going over to Hikari. Hikari on this Caitlyn has been really, really, really impressive. I'm sorry, not Caitlyn, Diane. Yeah, I'm surprised that Miracosa hasn't lost their top inhibitor yet. I really feel like Walnut High School should have put a ton more pressure there, but instead they're deciding to like siege down mid tower instead of top. Which is really mind-boggling to me because that top inhibitor is so free right now. I mean, they can force a 5v5 a completely even, which they will definitely win. But they're choosing the harder road right now. I mean, if you need to get to the top of the mountain, you might as well take the escalator that's set up and not try to climb. <laughs> Absolutely. I could not agree more. Escalator's OP in mountain climbing. Uh, but yeah, no, they're opting with this sort of 1-3-1. And I think they're just waiting for Miracosa to make a move um, so that they can then counter engage, win a team fight. I mean, we saw what led to this turret was very patience until they found the fight that they wanted in the jungle. Banshee's Veil and Black Shield still up now for a Captain Spyro. Death Sentence is going to hit a minion. Captain Spyro uses that one to go in. Box is thrown down. The Thresh Prince is going to flash out of that. Players reset, the fight doesn't continue, and it looks like they're just going to hand over this inhibitor for free. Not surprising, and that's the essence that's very well done by Just Childish. He's going to take down Threats. The Elastic Slingshot comes in. Let's bounce on the move. I am set to pants. With 2010. Is this the fight that Walnut wants to close out this game? Yeah, well, I mean, they finally grabbed the top inhibitor, which is what they should have been able to do about three minutes ago. But they do finally grab it now, which then opens up either a bottom inhibitor tower, or they can choose to go for Baron. Either one, I think, would be a good choice now. Yeah, and with Meganar not a threat, Alphyrius is able to easily take down Nar. Meanwhile, the aggressive Walnut is hiding back, which Child Childish is going to fall to an ignite. 
And there is a double kill. Meanwhile, Hikari, Captain Spyro both flashing over the walls. They want to end this one out. That is mid tower going down as well as the mid inhibitor. Only the Thresh Prince stands in the way. Hikari going to Lunar Rush in, gets hooked. Transcendent Blades coming out. There's the ace. Are they going to back up this one? They are. I think they can end, but... Caitlyn is up right now, so is Nar in about 5 seconds, so they can't really end. They probably could have grabbed that tower at least, but opting for the safer, making sure that they do not overextend and get caught out because of that. But now two inhibitors down. This game is just a matter of minutes before it's over. Yeah. So, Walnut will back away, and as you said, opting for the safer route, which is definitely the sort of play style we've seen from them so far in this series. Might not be the the web gem uh, earning play style of a few other teams, but it's certainly effective. Um, and you have to give them a lot of credit. They're playing this one very methodically and just you know making sure they go home with three points. Uh, really not a contest right now as long as they don't deviate from the plan. And yeah, I mean, very 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 well played. It was a fun match. Yep, so fourth dragon now going down in favor of Walnut and their shell has proven to be a little bit too hard here. They're going to be pushing bottom lane now, picking up this last inhibitor tower. And one really interesting thing I've noticed about this Walnut high school is that they absolutely hate Baron. They haven't even thought about going for Baron either of these two games, even though they have had very, very big leads in both games. They kind of just feel like Baron is unnecessary. Uh, in, in winning these games. Yeah. Well, specifically in this game, where we do have a last-ditch effort here coming out from Miracosa. GG Choi Young is going to throw down the Soul Shackles, but she goes down. Double kill onto Summoner Romney. So right now, a two-for-nothing trade. And it looks like this siege is going to be prevented a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, uh, about the Baron, I mean, it's definitely one of those things that say, why would we Baron if we, you know, only bad things can come of it. We don't need it to win. Um, of course, right there, they were, if they were not successful. If they had the Baron buff, that turret would have probably gone down in a heartbeat. Uh, I feel like they, they should get have... Baron now. Right. I, I, I feel like it would be a good pick for them. I mean, there are two inhibitors down, so it would be really hard for Miracosta to try and stop them from grabbing Baron, but still, Walnut High School opting opting to not go for Baron. I wonder if it's some type of like exercise their coach is having them do. Like, I want you guys to win this game without Baron. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, they definitely have been sort of avoiding it like the plague. I mean, we can see right now there's no vision coverage in that area. They are definitely just of the mindset of, you know, let's take this structure by structure. They've gotten the top inhibitor, they rotated down to mid, took down that one, and now they're going to try round two uh, on this bot inhibitor. Um, but what they want to try and do is dance out here. They want to try and not actually fight a hard engage, give the super minions in top and middle time to push in, and then grab this, this tower. I mean, Alfarius, this is the second time he's gotten a little bit overextended. He is going to fall to the ace in the hole. The rest of the team has taken down the turret, opened up the last gate. Inhibitor's going to fall. That is three inhibitors down. The fight continues, though. Captain Spiral on the front line goes in. Double kill going over to Hikari. Meanwhile, Lucian is able to take down our I am sexy fans. The only one remaining. He is going to fall. That's a quadra kill going over to Hikari. And GG for Walnut High School. Really, really solid, convincing performance here as they take this series 2-0. Yeah, well played both teams. Congratulations to Walnut 2-0 in the match. As you said, awarded three points for their match against Miracosta High School. And Miracosta isn't a bad team either. Like Miracosta has some we casted them relatively week, good players. I yeah, they, they cast very well. Yeah, last week they ended up winning to a forfeit, actually. Uh, they won one game 4v5, and then 
the other team forfeited out the second match. But yeah, I mean, they have some high ELO players on their team. And Walnut, in spite of that, just the better team overall, able to, to finish this game out. It took a little bit longer second time than it did game one. But yeah, Walnut High School, very solid performance both games. Yes, indeed. And yeah, it definitely did take a little bit longer. Um, but I'm, I'm impressed at sort of the maturity and the, the strategy coming out from Walnut. They are vowing victory in any time frame over um, rushing it down as what matters to them is the three points moving on in this tournament. Alrighty, guys. This is the last match that we were casting today. So that is all from us at High School Star League. But definitely make sure to check out our sponsors, Newegg, Rawcat, Twitch.tv, MSI, Tespa, Loot Crate, and Jinx. Without them, HSL would not be possible. Also, you can follow us, the casters, on our own personal uh, Twitter accounts. Mine at Legend by Night. Wins uh, 22, you want to... Yeah, uh, I am on Twitter as well. Wins, W-I-N-T-S underscore two two um definitely check that out i also want to give a shout out to sk and the riff rant video series if you haven't checked that out i just was lucky enough to do a guest spot on there so youtube riff rant um and that will come up so definitely check that out give that a like subscribe and leave a comment um but thanks so much by night it was a pleasure as always casting with you my friend um, yeah, it was that's a gonna pleasure do casting it with you for, as well for us here at high school star league Make sure to follow High School Star League, hsstarleague.com, on Twitter at HSStarleague, Facebook at HSStarleague, and on YouTube at High School Star League.